introduction and welcome to our Cyber Sanctuary. We are so happy to have you here with us on this Sunday morning. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Ken E. Sullivan Jr., our First Lady Roxy Sullivan, and the entire New Direction family, we welcome you and we thank you for streaming with us today. Let's get ready for worship. Praise the Lord, people of God all over the world. We're going to borrow from the OJs. Everybody in the world, join hands. This is a love train here at New Direction Church. This is the place where we are leading people to a better life. We welcome you no matter what corner of the world you are in today. We believe that God is going to do something special in your life via the word from Pastor Sullivan. We thank you for joining us today. Please join me in a brief word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings. As the senior saints used to say, blessings that are, that are seen and unseen. Lord, you sit high, you look low. No matter where we are, Father God, you will never leave us or forsake us. We thank you right now, Father God, for the word that is going to come forth to transform and to change lives, Father God. We pray and believe that those who are watching today are going to leave better changed than they were before they came. Lord, we thank you for all of your many blessings. It is in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining us on today. God is going to bless you richly for joining us in this worship service. God bless. Thank you, Lord. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe, because yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Yes! Giants are still being slain. God, we believe, yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do.
Give it up one more time for our awesome and amazing music department. You have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is our light and he is our salvation. Whom shall we fear and whom shall we be afraid of? Listen, I want you right where you're at, in your house, in your home, wherever you're viewing us from, to know that you are welcomed in this space, in this place, and we thank God for your very presence. Now, we've already worshiped God with our lips. Let us worship God with our livelihood. How many of y'all know that worship is not just done with our lips, it's also done with our livelihood. It's not just done in song, it's also done with our substance. So I want to invite you on today to let's worship God in giving to the best of our ability. Throughout this whole season, we've been able to be a blessing to hundreds of of families through our food pantry. And on yesterday, we were able to bless so many people, not just through our pantry, but also with Thanksgiving Day baskets and meals. Because of your giving and your faithfulness, we've been able to continue to show the love of Jesus Christ to many. So I want to encourage you not just to give to God in worship, but we also give to God's work. Let's continue to honor God and worship him through giving. You can do that through online giving, through NDC Better Life. You can also give through text to give. That number is there. And then also through our mobile app. If you haven't downloaded our mobile app, make sure you do that so that you can stay in touch with us and you can have the freedom and flexibility to be able to go right
right to your app and to access everything that we do. Also, through AutoPay, I want to encourage everyone to become a recurring giver. Giving should not just be sporadically. It should be done consistently. So let's just give to God that way. Then Givelify, NDC Better Life, and you can also mail, not cash, but your checks to the church. Let's worship God in giving. During this season of Thanksgiving, we want to give God thanks, and we want to be seen as givers. God gives the givers. I am excited about this season. This whole series in the month of November has been a blessing to me to prepare these messages, and I've gotten so many testimonies about how it's been a blessing to you all. Today, I want to turn us to a familiar passage of Scripture, but I want to draw fresh water from an old well. I want to invite you to open up your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to look at verses 26 through 40. But as always, before we read this powerful poignant passage of scripture, I want to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Right in your home, I want you to silence everything that would distract you or detract from the word being delivered and open up your hearts and minds and be receptive and ready to receive, thus saith the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for everything you've already done, everything we've already heard and seen and felt in our souls. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you, God, how you've allowed us in this season to look to you by faith and not by fear. So, God, even in this moment, speak to our hearts and our minds. Touch every soul under the sound of my voice. Minister to us now. Feed me, God, on my feet that I might preach and teach your word and explain it to your people that they might be edified and strengthened. Bless us now. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Here it is, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Beginning at the 26th verse, and here's what it says. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his older brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why do you come down here? And with whom have you left those few little sheep within the wilderness? I know your pride and your insolence. I know the insolence of your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go down and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard, and I struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. And he also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand. And he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Today I want to talk about be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. 
It was Shakespeare in Hamlet who said, to thine own self be true. I've discovered that there is a certain freedom that we receive and we enjoy when we are true and sincere to who God has called for us to be. I believe that one of the best things that we can do is to be real and honest and true to ourselves. To be true to yourself means to act in accordance with who you are and who you believe God has made you to be. If you know and love yourself, you will find it effortless to be true to who God has designed and desires for you to be. I found there's a certain freedom in being the person who God has originally created and has designed for you to be. I want you today to have the courage and the confidence to walk with your head up and be the person who God has skillfully created and designed for you to be. Allow your individuality and your uniqueness to shine through. Allow God to work with your unique qualities, your personality, so that you become the person he's really called for you to be. David is an example of someone who was literally true to himself. I love David because David was an original. David was not a carbon copy. He was not someone who perpetrated a fraud. But David was comfortable in his own skin. David provides for us an example of someone who had the courage and the confidence to be himself. He was a country boy who was literally called to be a king. When God comes to his father Jesse's house, he looks to anoint the next king of Israel, and he looks over all of Jesse's sons, but they left David out of the running. In fact, when they go to get David, many of them had considered him not to be one of the ones that the prophet would look for to anoint, but David is the one who God chose and selected to be his king. David shows us that when we're true to ourselves, God can do more with us than he can with us trying to copy and to mimic someone else. Israel at this particular time is literally locked into a head-to-head -head battle. In fact, there is a stand still as that giant Goliath from Gath stands literally in the valley and the Philistines are on one side of a mountain and it is the Israelites on the others. He has come down to challenge all of the Israelites and all of the armies of Israel are hiding out in caves and they're cowering as Goliath is taunting them. Goliath has issued a challenge. Goliath said, bring me someone from your side who is worthy to engage me in battle. And because he was so tall and so strong and so experienced, all of the Israelites were cowering and hiding in caves. David shows up just to deliver bread and cheese. David shows up as a pizza delivery boy. David shows up just doing a door dash errand. And the Bible says he overhears what Goliath is saying. And watch what David says. David says, I'll be your huckleberry. David said, not all of us are afraid. Not all of us are shaken and cowardice. Some of us still believe in the power power of God. Notice the first quality of David. Write this down. David had audacity. David had come from the sheepfold and he shows up and hears Goliath and watch what David does. David says, I'm not afraid of what you all are afraid of because David was a man of faith, not a man of fear. I love David because David has a different spirit. David is willing to run toward what other people are running running from. David doesn't see this as an obstacle. He sees it as an opportunity. David doesn't see Goliath as a problem. He sees him as a means of promotion. Read the text again. David asks the question, what is the reward for the person who goes to battle against this giant? They tell David what the reward is. Watch David. David said, I'm not one who's afraid to step up to the challenge. I will challenge the champion. I want somebody in here today to know that sometime God will allow us to deal with challenges, but it's the challenges that make us champions. God doesn't want you to look at your problems as obstacles. He wants you to see them as opportunities. It's an opportunity for you to grow. It's an opportunity for you to be stronger. It's an opportunity to show what you're made of. It's an opportunity for you to flex your faith, and sometime God will allow you to have a problem before he promotes you. I 
came to tell somebody on the day that God wants you to have a different perspective. He doesn't want you to walk by fear. He wants you to walk by faith. I love this because David shows up. He's not skilled, not trained, has not been in the army, but David has, watch this, a fresh perspective in this brief moment. He believes that what he has been allowed to do is have an opportunity through this challenge that's been issued by this champion. I want somebody to understand this. He was not intimidated by Goliath. He was infuriated by Goliath. They saw Goliath and trembled. David saw Goliath as a trophy. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who would dare defy the armies of the living God? He saw this as a grand opportunity. And I want somebody to understand on today that if you are going to be yourself, you are going to have to accept life's challenges head on. Life will present you with some challenges, things that will taunt you and tell you why you can't win and why you can't make it. There will be things that come up against you and tell you why you cannot overcome, but thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. For somebody, it may be a physical challenge. For somebody, it may be an environmental challenge. For somebody, it might be be a financial challenge somebody it might be circumstantial but God is using that challenge to pull the champion out of you realize that the things you see as a challenge are really an opportunity for you to grow and I don't know who I'm talking to on today but you got to shake everything loose that tells you why you can't make it you got to see your challenges as an opportunity for you to become a champion Jesse Owens saw the giant of racism and he took that challenge on and became a champion. Wilma Rudolph had the challenge of polio, told her she wouldn't walk or run, took that challenge and giant on and became a champion. The Wright brothers saw the challenge of aerodynamics. They took that challenge on and they built that aircraft which we are still using and amazed at today. Don't look at the stuff that comes against you when you come up against it and say what if I fall? But what if you fly? What if God uses this opportunity to take you to another level? Could it be God is allowing you to have the obstacle so he can show you an opportunity to move you forward? Thanks be to God who's made us over comers, triumphant, and victors, not victims. But I want you to understand something. You start talking like this and thinking like this, your courage will arouse some criticism. I want you to hear me on today because what David is audacious enough to do did not come without him agitating some people who were mediocre. Don't miss this. David shows up and he accepts the challenge from the giant. And his own brother is the first one to criticize him. He questions David's motives. I know the insolence of your heart. I know your pride and your arrogance. I know what you've come down here to do. Can I help you understand that anytime you have the audacity to be who God has called you to be, you will agitate and irritate some people who've been sitting on the sidelines. Here's what's amazing to me. His brother Eliab for 40 days had heard what Goliath was saying, but he never confronted Goliath. He confronted David. He's allowing Goliath to punk him, but he's willing to go against his own brother. Out of convenience, he criticizes him because David dared to do what he was scared to do. Can I help you understand on today that when you decide to be courageous enough to be the person God has called you to be, you will become the victim of friendly fire. There will be some people who fire criticism, level attacks against you, but the only reason they're attacking you is because you're anointed. You missed it. It's in the previous chapter that David is anointed. Now in this chapter, he is attacked. Never be surprised because the anointing attracts attacks. I want somebody to understand something. God is not going to get you to where he's called for you to be without some people stabbing you in the back, criticizing you, talking about you, running your name in the mud, trying to discourage you from being who God 
God has called you to be. But if God be for you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter about their opinion, what they have to say. If God has called and equipped you, he'll help you to overcome. I love this because if you read more deeply into the story, here's what's interesting that you'll discover. David is the younger brother who the prophet was not even supposed to anoint to be king. His brother Eliab is the eldest. So Eliab already has an alt against David because he's just seen David anointed, so you know he doesn't want to see him elevated. He wants the anointing that David has. No, here it is. He thought he should be the one who was selected, who was anointed. So the fact that he's criticizing David is because David is now about to take center field. Can I help you understand on the day? The closer you get to your goals, the more opposition you will face and the opposition will become more fierce. The more you are comfortable loving the skin you're in, walking in who God has called for you to be, you are going to deal with attacks being levied against you. The greatest issue his brother had was that David had the audacity to come from the sheepfold and act as if he was a soldier. Realize some of the stuff you attempt to do and aspire to go after will agitate some people who are closest to you. It was Aristotle who said this. If you want to avoid criticism, here's what you do. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. But the moment you start saying something, the moment you start being something, the moment you start doing something, people will come at you from all angles, and you might be surprised. It was cool as long as David was on the sidelines. The issue was he was about to take center field, and some people have the audacity to hate on you because you dare to do what they're scared to do. The issue his brother had with him is that he had something on the inside that his brother did not possess. So he wanted to criticize David so he could kill his confidence. How many people out there have dreams that are being aborted? Have ideas that are being aborted? Have stuff you want to go after but you don't? Because there's some people around you criticizing you trying to kill your character. You have to have enough confidence in who God called you to be to understand if God be for you who can be against you I want you to understand this I love this about David because the text says David turned from talking to him and he started talking to other people and David asked the question is there not a cause see I want you to hear this some people wish they had what you have some people wish they had your fearlessness your drive, your tenacity, your courage, your confidence. Some people wish they had your ideas, your willingness to be who God has called for you to be. Some of the people who criticize you are actually jealous of you because they secretly wish they had the qualities you possess. Did you hear what I just said? And the tragedy of life is some people listen to their critics more than they listen to God. What if David listened to his brother? What if David allowed what he said to get in his mind? It would have stopped him from moving forward. David was not moved by the assessments and opinions of other people. Instead, he was determined to go after it and be who God had called him to be. The reason David could be so audacious is because he had already been anointed. The reason David was so audacious is because he already had God's approval. And when you got God's approval, you don't care about other people's opinion. God had already anointed him. God had already deputized him. God had already set him apart before his brother criticized him. And because he had the anointing of God over his life, he wasn't moved by the opinions of other people. I want somebody to hear this on the day. God is the one that already has given you his stamp of approval. Please hear me on the day. And since God has given you his approval, you can stop auditioning. Did you hear what I said? Since God has already given you his approval, you can stop the auditions. How many of y'all remember the show The Voice? On The Voice, people would show up and they would perform and try to hit all the right notes, all the right keys. They would perform to impress the judges 
hoping to get in their good graces and get put on their team. So they would perform and they would sing and try to hit the right notes, hoping that the judges would turn around in their chair and select them. I want somebody to know on the day, you don't have to audition for other people's approval. God has already given you his stamp of approval. You don't have to try to politic, hit the right notes, placate the personalities, be the person God has called you to be. And if God has already given you approval, you don't need man's affirmation. I want to know, is there anybody at your house who recognizes that you've been fearfully, wonderfully made by God? So whether or not you're the flesh they savor, whether or not you're the person they want, whether or not they're the person you want on their team, God has already selected you and he who began a good work in you shall bring it to completion. But wait a minute, I love this about David. It's important for you to note this. David not only had audacity, David had authenticity. David was audacious and David was authentic because when he shows up, Eliab criticizes him, and Saul doubts him. See, because before you do anything big, you got to go through criticism, doubters, people who don't believe in you. But if God puts something in your heart, you've got to be who God has called for you to be. Because notice what David does. He hears what Goliath has said. They give word back to Saul, who is the king. This is now the opportunity for God to use this problem to promote David. But when he goes to Saul, Saul says, it only makes sense for me to put you in my clothes. Come here, you're small in stature. You're a little dude. You're small and young. Let me give you my mail and coat of armor. Let me put my helmet on you. I'm also going to give you my sword. Now watch this. It was a compliment that the king would give to the shepherd boy his own armor. This was a personal touch. It showed something significant. But watch what David does. David says, thank you, King Saul. I honor you and I respect you. And I've actually looked up to you, but I got to be myself in this situation. I I'm impressed with all that you've been able to do, but, but I'm not just impressed with what you've been able to do. I know what God has called me to do. Can I help somebody on today? Be impressed with other people. Be influenced by other people, but don't lose your own identity. Recognize who God has called for you to be. And the same God that worked with him will work with you. In fact, Jesus told his own disciples, greater works than these shall you do because you believe in me. I'm going to stop and have church for myself right now. Is there anybody here who knows this is your time? This is your season. God has placed a special anointing on your life. Why I draw from other people, learn from other people. I recognize the gift God has given me. Is there anybody at your house who still believes God is up to something great in you? And David said, I thank you, Saul. I appreciate it. But here's what I want you to understand. I roll a little bit different. And he tries to walk in Saul's clothes, but the Bible says it didn't work. It looked odd, him trying to be somebody he was not. I want to help somebody on today. Don't fear being the person God created you to be. Your voice, your shape, your size, your background, your hair length, your texture, your nose, your shape, your, the way you talk, your sense of humor, all of that is material God wants to use for you to get to your destiny. You have to be comfortable and love the skin you are in. What David teaches us is that you can be inspired by other people, but don't lose your own identity. We should find other people that we draw from, that we glean from, but recognize who God has called for you to be. I'm in 
inspired by people who are in my field. I'm inspired by my mentors. I love what they have been able to do. But God doesn't bring you around great people just for you to be inspired by them. He puts you around them so you can attempt to do what they did. God opens up doors for you to see greatness on another level so that he can prepare you for the places he's going to put you in. And I've decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I lived as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity. I want to know there's some real people on the line who can say when you get me, you're getting 100% real. What you will find is what you see is what you get. Are there a few people at your house who still believe it's better to be yourself than to be a perpetrated fraud? David said, I'm sorry. I love you, King Saul, but I got to roll a little bit different. I want to help and give somebody some freedom on today. When we talk about fear, it's not just a phobia of spiders, being in the dark. We need to overcome the fear of just being who God has called us to be. So what if they don't accept you? So what if you don't fit in there? So what if they don't want you? Oh, God said, I fearfully and wonderfully design you. If you spend your time looking at everyone else trying to be like them, you'll never grow into the unique person God created and intended for you to be. You will never fulfill God's purpose for your life wearing someone else's clothes. God has put a call on your life and here's what you need to do. Discover and be aware of your own attributes and abilities and you'll accomplish great things. Find out what your own strengths and abilities are. Discover who God equipped you to be. Recognize that the gifts he's put inside of you are just as effective as the one you see operated in someone else's life. Here's a time for you to recognize that God has equipped you with enough strength, with enough savvy, given you enough sense so that you can be successful. Stop measuring yourself against other people, feeling as though you fall short. Thank God for how he made you, how he shaped you and designed you. Your handprint, your DNA, your dental impression is an indication God has made you unique. I love the words from Jay Moss. In his song, he says, don't be ashamed, for God has arranged you worth more than a billionaire, exclusively engineered. God has uniquely designed and created you for his own purpose. David, don't miss this, was not only comfortable with who he was, David was confident in who he was. David said, I'm sorry, I don't roll like that. I can't use a shield and a sword, but I can work with a slingshot. Uh, I want you to catch this. We've got to learn to be grateful for who God has made us, trying to be what others desire for us to be will cause us to miss who God has designed for us to be. I want you to write that down. Here's a quote for you. Trying to be who other people desire for you to be will cause you to miss who God has designed for you to be. I want you to understand on today, there's contributions for you to make. There, there's a perspective only you have. There's ideas that only God has given you. There's things only you can accomplish and contribute to society. Don't be content applauding and admiring the accomplishments of other people. Make sure you make a mark yourself. I want you in this season to lay before God and say, God, show me every part of me. Show me from the head to my toe. Show me every single recipe and what you put inside of me, every single ingredient, everything that you put in me, from my personality to my background, to my family, to my color, to my context, to my culture, to the city I'm from. God, since you don't waste material and I'm fearfully made in your image, show me who it is you've called for me to be. And this is a chance for us to overcome the fear of being who God has designed for us to be. You will never reach your full potential, trying to be someone you're not. Can I tell you the sad truth is, the 
The sad truth is many people live a lie and many people are perpetrating a fraud being a carbon copy of someone else rather than being the person God called them to be. I'm a movie person. Y'all know that by now. Um, one of the favorite movies that I watch was a movie called The Talented Mr. Ripley. It's an interesting movie played by Matt Damon on The Talented Mr. Ripley. Matt Damon gets into a circle of high society people, and he's able to run with them and vacation with them, but he takes on the name of someone else in order to fool them into thinking he's one of them. And so he's in high society with the people, and he's admiring this young man's life so much that he gets so jealous and angry with the man, he kills him because he wants to be him. When he gets done killing a man, somebody asks him, why in the world was he perpetrating a fraud and doing all the things that he was doing? Watch what he said. He said, I would rather be a fake somebody than a real nobody. I would rather be fake at trying to be somebody I'm not than real at being who I am. And sadly enough, that's some people's commentary right now. There's some people right now who are living their life as if they're in a costume at a costume party. Some people right now, what they say is not what they mean. They smile and laugh at stuff they don't think is funny. They go along to get along. But I want to know there's some real people on the line on today who recognize just take me as I am or have nothing to do with with me at all. I haven't seen so many fake and phony fickle people in all of my life. That's the problem with this culture. We got a whole lot of people who are impressionists and impersonators instead of being the innovative people God has called for them to be. We've got people who are wearing many faces. People who don't stand for anything but blow away like the wind. People who are wearing masks but God told me to tell somebody on the day, it's time for you to take the mask off and say, I'm going to be who God has called for me to be without any edits, without any additives, without any preservatives. What you see is what you get. I'm killing the filters. I'm going to be who God, have I got anybody at your house who still knows it's important for you to be real? And David said, I'm sorry. I got to take all this off. This ain't me. Then watch what he said. In fact, is cramping my style. Oh, can I help you understand something? Watch what David said. David said, I'm sorry. That this, this is not who I am. I don't roll with that. I can't wear your helmet. Thank you, Saul. I appreciate it. I learned a lot from you. I've watched you. I can't wait to learn some other things. But for this fight, I got to be myself. Oh, for me to reach the next level, I got to love who I am. And David took the costume off. And he became his authentic self. And David began to take what he was familiar with. Can I remind you, I've used that verse multiple times. David is the one who penned, I have been fearfully and wonderfully created. David knew who he was. So he didn't have to become somebody he was not to try to impress some people he was trying to get on with. Oh, I want to help somebody on today. David developed this sense of self-awareness when he was out in the sheepfold. Remember, it was David who was not even selected in the first running of his brothers to be selected as king. But David spent time out in the sheepfold during that time unbeknownst to him God was preparing him in the pasture God was getting him ready for this giant by the name of Goliath the whole time he had no idea that when he was fighting against lions tigers and bears oh my the whole time God was getting him ready for his Goliath I don't know who I'm talking to right here but I feel the Holy Ghost telling me to tell you he's getting you ready for your Goliath the reason is so difficult right Right now is because God is developing you. The reason you got so much strain is because God is strengthening you. The reason you got so much pain is because God is preparing you. If you let God get you ready in this moment, he'll put you on the stage you've been looking to get on. Is there anybody at your house who believes this is the season? God is getting you ready for something more significant. And the whole time he said, I've fought with bears. And lions, lions who have a biting pressure of 900 pounds. David said, I've killed a lion and I've killed a bear. This giant 
is not going to be any different. In fact, the whole time, God has been getting me ready. God had David in the background. I want to talk to somebody in the background right now. God is changing the guard. In fact, after this battle, they would stop singing the songs of Saul and they would start singing the songs of David. God has a funny way of taking people who are at the back of the line and bringing them to the forefront. He didn't jockey for the position, didn't push to get the position. David said, is there not a cause? David had audacity. David had authenticity. But David had awesomeness. Here it is. Let me say it this way. David was audacious. David was authentic. And David was awesome. In a nutshell, watch what David does. He steps to the scene without a sword and a shield. But he shows up with his slingshot and a few smooth stones. David said, I can't work a sword or a sling. But I got a pocket full of stones. He said, I got a pocket full of stones I can work with. And if you put those stones in my hand, I can take this giant down. I don't have all the stuff that Saul has. I don't have armor. I don't have his shield. I don't have his coat of melt. I don't, I don't have his sword. I don't have all of his stuff outwardly. But God put more in me than he gave me outwardly. I don't know who I'm talking to on the day. All you got is a rag and a rock. You may not have the degree somebody else has. You may not have the money somebody else has. You may not have the friends in high places. You may not have the connections. You may not even have the credit. But if God be for you, God will take your rag and your rock and cause you to do some stuff that was greater than you imagined. I don't know who I'm talking to on the day. You may not have all the stuff you think you need outwardly. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. David teaches us, you don't have to have everything you need. All you have to have is God and what he gave you. Let me say it another way. You don't have to have everything you want. All you have is what you need. Did you hear what I said? You may not have everything you want, but everything you have is everything you need. With just a rag and a rock, he steps out to challenge this giant. I love this because David, don't miss this, does not take any defensive weapons. Let me help you understand this. David takes his slingshot and stones. He does not take a shield. Why is that so important? Because he expected to win. He expected to come out of this thing on top. He expected to be victorious. He said, I don't even need a shield. I'm going to take this joker head off his shoulders. I know how to handle him right where he is. David said, I don't have to have a shield because all I do is win. I'm expecting to be victorious. Now I'm talking to some people, members of New Direction Church. I want you to know all we do is win. When you walk to the door, you ought to expect for it to open. When you apply for the position, you ought to expect to get good news. When you go after what God put in your heart, you ought to expect the answer you've been waiting for. You don't don't have to have any backup. All you got to have is faith. In fact, God sometimes will only give you faith to proceed off of. I don't have money. I don't have credit. I got a promise and a dream and a call from God, but that's enough for me to do what God has called for me to do. This is not for everybody, but is there anybody? If it's just one person, if it's two people, if it's five people, I dare you to stand up on your feet and say, all I got is a rag and a rock, but I believe God who's going to do something greater with my stuff than I even imagined. David steps out. I love this. And the Bible says when he meets Goliath head on. I didn't read all this to you. Please read it in your private time. As you can see, I love it. David shows up. Goliath is about 10 feet tall. Goliath's shield and his sword was bigger and weighed more than David. David takes his 
slingshot, kills that giant. Then he takes his own sword and chops off his head and lifts up his head as a trophy. He took the thing that was trying to take him out. God used it to take him up. Oh, I'm going to say it again. God took the thing that tried to take him out and used it to take him up. David shifts the tide. I told you that Israel had been hiding out in caves. All of them were afraid until David stepped up and decided to be the person God called him to be. In fact, David shifted the tide. The Bible says when he killed Goliath, all of those soldiers who had been afraid to step up were now stepping out. If David would not have been his original self, he would not have inspired other people who were hiding out and afraid to make a move. Here's why you got to be true to yourself. Because there's some people God wants you to inspire and there's a world he wants you to impact. You got to be yourself for all of the people who are afraid to be themselves. You got to be yourself for all of the people who don't have confidence to be themselves. But when they see somebody like you strutting with your style, with your sauce dripping, when people see you being the person God has called for you to be, it will build their confidence and self-esteem. Yes, when you see me, I'm going to have a smile on my face. Yes, when you see me, I'm going to walk with my head held high. Yes, when you see me, my shoulders are going to be up straight. Yes, when you see me, I'm going to be who God has called for me to be because it's not just about me. It's about the people who's watching me and somebody needs to see somebody bold and real enough to walk in the confidence of their God and the people who know their God shall be mighty in the earth and shall do exploits. David shows up, kills the giant, changes and shifts the tide of the war. Israel comes out of their caves. They're able to overcome the Philistines and win the war. They're able to win the war because David was willing to be himself. They're able to overcome because David was comfortable being who God has called for him to be. I came to tell somebody on the day, God wants you to be who he's called for you to be. There's an impact for you to make. There's some people for you to inspire. There's some contributions for you to make. God wants you in this season to have the confidence, to have the courage to be the person he's called you to be. I'm closing. When my son, David, was just a little bitty boy, he liked to get inside of my shoes. He would get inside of my shoes, and he would try to walk in them, but he was too small to feel my shoes. He'd get inside of my shoes, and he would stumble. He would fall, and it looked funny because he would try to make turns, but he couldn't. He was trying to feel his father's shoes. And so I had to stop him and say, no, these are not your shoes. Let me put your shoes on you. And when he put on his own shoes, he could walk without stumbling. When he put on his own shoes, he could jump and turn corners. When he put his own shoes on, he was able to do what he couldn't do in mine. I came to tell somebody on the day, God has given you your own shoes to feel. God has given you your own destiny to follow. God has put a call on your own life. You got to trust who God has called you to be is more than enough. Stop trying to be somebody else. Stop trying to imitate them. Walk in the call that God has placed on your life for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I want to know is there anybody at your house who recognizes there's a call on your life so you ought to be confident enough, courageous enough to be who God has called for you to be. Lives of great men all remind us we can live our lives sublime and in so doing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. I want to know is there anybody at your house who believes God has chosen you for such a time as this? I I dare you to stand up on your feet, open up your mouth, and give God some glory. Is there anybody here who don't mind standing on your feet, opening up your mouth, and giving God some glory, and giving God some praise? Shout glory, shout glory, glory, 
glory. Oh, I dare you to praise God right at your house for who God has called, equipped, and anointed you to be. I want you to hear this on the day. Don't be ashamed. God has arranged you worth more than a billionaire, exclusively engineered. David said, I am going to be who God has called for me to be. I'm not going to be King Saul. He's King Saul. In fact, God put him under Saul. Please hear me in closing. God allowed him to be under Saul so he could see some things, what to do and what not to do, what good he could glean from Saul, but then what bad he should leave behind. God wants you to get to know him and get to know who he called for you to be. But wait a minute. It's not just about David. It's about the son of David, Jesus the Christ. There was another giant that taunted men called death. Before Jesus arrived, men were cowering, afraid of death. Jesus comes on the scene, and he takes death out by being crucified, buried, and rising from the dead. The Bible says that for those of us who follow him and believe in him, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead will be at work in our life. I want somebody on today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, as your champion, he is the one we are to follow like Israel followed David to come out of our caves, out of our hiding. The Bible says, rise and shine for the light has come. God's light shine bright on us through his son, Jesus Christ, so that we don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear the giant of death, mortality, because those of us who follow in Jesus' footsteps, the Bible says we too shall rise from the dead. If that's you and it's time for you to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, my greatest joy out of this message and out of this service would be to know that you gave your heart and your life to Jesus Christ and that you were born again. Pastor, what does that mean to be born again? We were born in the natural sense, and when we were born, we were born with sin in us. Sin is a birth defect that's passed down to every single human being. It's a sickness, and we need the vaccine only God can give us. All of us have been exposed to it. All of us are impacted by sin. Only Jesus has the vaccine. If that's you and you want to be healed, cured, delivered, and a relationship with God, it's only found through his son, Jesus Christ. I want you to pray a simple prayer with me. If that's you and God has spoken to you, I want you to repeat after me, Father, I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I recognize I've sinned. I've fallen short of your glory. I ask Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life and to save me. I now confess Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. I declare he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He's the champion. He's Jehovah. He's God in flesh. He is my Savior. I confess him as my Lord, my Savior, my God. And today I declare I'm saved in Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, God knows English. He knows, he knows Ghanese. He knows all types of languages, whatever your language is. The most important language is love and sincerity that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. So listen, if you've done that on today, we cannot wait to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Don't keep it to yourself. Let us know about it. Let others know about it as well. I want you to do this. Perhaps you need a church home. You're saved. You're a Christian. But you need a covering. You need a place where you can grow. You can develop. You can become who God has called for you to be. You don't have to look any further. The New Direction Church, we would absolutely love to have you a part of our church family. We want to see you grow. We want to see you become who God has called for you to be. Let us know that's you and you're making that decision. Please contact us. There's information there for how you can get in touch with us. And let us know your testimony that on today the Holy Spirit said something beyond what I said. And you gave your heart to Christ. Amen. Now is a chance where we can all participate. Let the church say all. When we come to the house of the Lord, we are able to worship God not just with our lips, but we're able to worship God with our livelihood. It's a chance for us to worship God with what we have, and today is no different. 
Let's worship God in giving. You all listen. We still have an opportunity and a chance to give toward our efforts and our campaign, please hear me, to pay off $2 million worth of medical debt for our residents in the Indianapolis area. We want you to give toward that. Help us to do that. Help us to make that difference on today. Listen, there's information how you can do that. But this is not a substitute for our regular tithes and offerings. You'll see there on the website, ndcbetterlife.org. We can give that way. Then there's text to give. Through our mobile app, we can give that way through AutoPay, GiveLify, as well as our cash app. We can honor God and give to him that way as well. Let's honor Jesus Christ on the day and give to him because he gave to us so generously. Listen, make sure you tune in this Thursday. This Thursday, please tune in. I know you're getting ready your Thanksgiving Day meals. Turn on at 9 o'clock a.m. for our special Thanksgiving Day worship service. I can't wait to be with you all and your family. And I know that some of us, as we practice safe social distancing, we are still going to have some family. And I know some of y'all just hard-headed like that. I know that. Turn on your church services so that your family can be witnessed to and saved and touched by the word of God. Amen. Listen, that's all I have. I am going to pray and release you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for these precious moments you've given us. God, help us on today to be the people you call for us to be. Help us to stand up and be honorable, to be trustworthy, to be honest, to be forthright, to be courageous. God, give us the boldness that we need to face our giants and to deal with life's challenges, allowing them to make us champions. Touch every heart and mind on the sound of my voice. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Listen, love you. God bless you. See you soon. Hey, family. I pray that you enjoyed today's worship experience. Here are your weekly announcements. Children's Church meets every Sunday at 10 a.m. via Facebook and Zoom. Check out the Indie Kids Facebook group for more information. Tune in with New Direction Church for our annual Thanksgiving Day service as we celebrate and give thanks to God for keeping us through this season. Service will begin promptly at 9 a.m., so be sure to gather your family around and worship with us. These are your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week.